Great. Welcome all to the Land Week endorsement interview. Um, the uh, <laughs> you know, the ground rules, rules on this are, I mean, we basically ask a bunch of questions. We don't guarantee equal time for everyone. It kind of just depends what we want to know and where the conversation goes. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, we like to start this basically, each of you spend a few minutes, not too many, introducing yourselves, um, why you are running, um, and just kind of give us a bit about your civic background and you know what led you to be here. So, we'll start. Uh, yeah, um, I'm Antonio Pettyjohn Blue. I'm native from Portland, Oregon. I was born here um, from political leaders, uh, some of our uh, best leaders who ran the city and had it um, greener and happier. So it's like, that's kind of why I'm running. Uh, we recently lost both of them um, due to them wanting to see this better. So um, I'm, I honor my father and his friend Goldsmith. And um, he, although there was a mistake made that doesn't reflect on us, I want to uh, make that for the records. And, uh, but I am family and uh, I do honor him as well for the uh, knowledge he passed down to me. So I have the uh, blueprints on some things we can do to get it back how he had it with the festivals and um, just the infrastructure, okay. the, the green energy, clean energy. Awesome. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, so I'm Jennifer Park. My background is in public serving nonprofit work. So for the past five years, I have worked at a local nonprofit that does programs for public schools to support students with learning challenges. Before that, I worked at a PPS elementary school. And before moving to Portland 10 years ago, I spent six years working in supportive housing in San Francisco's Tenderloin. Uh, we housed formerly chronically homeless adults with acute mental and behavioral health challenges. And for part of that time, I ran a 94-unit supportive housing hotel. Um, so the reason I'm running is because a couple of years ago, I got to a point where I felt like I'd committed my career to addressing the symptoms of what are ultimately systemic problems, and I wanted to get into the local political side and address those issues from the institutional position. So I'm getting my executive master's in public administration at PSU, and I decided to run this cycle because I want to see us lay a foundation in the new city council of governing from a human-centered, values-based perspective, and I believe uh, have the new legislative council will um, progress best with people-centered policy, effective policy making. All right. Um, yeah, I'm Laura Strebe. We moved to Portland 20 years ago so that I could get my master's in music education at Portland State. And while I was starting to work on that degree, realized the lack of music and arts education in Portland due to measures 5 and 50. And so um, instead of pursuing a degree in music education, I ended up doing performance and then founded the visual arts and music educational nonprofit called Vibe of Portland. And we are now in our 17th year of programming, making sure that kids, specifically in Title I schools, have access to arts and music education. I was um, Skidmore Prize winner in 2010 um, when I was pregnant with my second child. And um, yeah, for the last 17 years, been really working on making sure that under-resourced communities and schools have access to quality arts education. Um, I serve on the board for the St. John's Boosters Business Association, so I'm very involved in what's happening with our small business districts and the needs that our small business owners need. And I started, well, I decided to run for City Council just over a year ago. The last time I spoke at City Council was um, as a former member of the Arts Tax Oversight Committee, and uh, I was the chair of that committee for four years and on it for seven. And when I was presenting um, challenges and our findings and best recommendations to City Council, they were not listening and just made me frustrated that experts in the room were telling them best ways to make our city better and they weren't listening. 
and heard that from environmental activists and transportation activists and housing professionals that our leaders weren't listening and so I wanted to be a leader that listens and helps set policy based on the experts and the best minds that we have in Portland. My beef with the arts tax is that it's super impossible to pay it. Yeah. It is very frustrating. I actually just yeah, had conversations with people about me with the city actually yesterday trying to figure out how to make that implementation smoother because if we didn't have to think about it and have it be an extra thing that we have to do and there's a lot of buttons to click on that. If we didn't have to do that, I think most people wouldn't even bat an eye at that $35. I mean, there's lots of views on it, but I, but I will say that like, 100%. I haven't paid it in like seven years, and it's not because I have a problem with thirty-five dollars. I just keep hitting some buttons, and I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to do this. It's frustrating to do. This yeah, this isn't my problem. Yeah, I will say it does fund a hundred educators that would lose their jobs if that went away. So we need to also think about how we're working at the state level to fully fund education, especially since the arts and music are considered a core piece of our educational background, especially with Representative Bonamici's um, Every Student Succeeds Act. The arts are a core piece of that, and we need to figure out how to fully fund that in addition to or instead of. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I want to ask all of you about how you feel the city is doing to address homelessness. Um, and specifically, I want to ask you, you know, how do you think the city should keep its relationship with the county, with the Joint Office of Homeless Services, or do you think we need to get out of that, and why? You want to, we'll start with you, since you have sure. significant experience. I have that information, but I just, I'll go last. So okay. There. <laughs> so, um, I do think that we should keep our relationship. I think our current council has a habit of saying, okay, let's try this, and then if it doesn't work straight out the gate, they back off and we need to actually be working toward establishing patterns where we're improving on things and, and ensuring that we're making the steps to actually achieve what we set out to achieve and this is one of those examples so I think we should but we also need to repair our relationship with the county so why isn't this partnership working more effectively um, we need to be a regional leader in addressing houselessness so right now you know central city concern had office hours and they're like if you have a client who needs a bed you're picking up the phone and calling every other organization to ask if they have a bed so we can create the infrastructure so that we know where beds are available and whether they meet that individual's needs so does it allow a service animal um, is it appropriate for someone who's a veteran with PTSD we don't have that information so there's a lot of work that we can do as an infrastructure leader to unite all of this work and ensure that we are making multiple pathways to housing um, that currently you know we don't have that um, so I think that we should partner with the county I think we need to rebuild that relationship I think we need to address houselessness more comprehensively and part of that is working with a network of our services and, and bringing all of that work together so we're actually meeting people's needs. So I, I do kind of wonder, I mean you talk about repairing this relationship, mm -hmm. but it sounds like we don't right now from what you're describing have this an idea of where beds are at any given mm -hmm. time, which seems like a very fundamental thing you would want to solve this problem. So I kind of wonder, I mean, I just kind of want to push you, why would we be keeping the same strategy we've been doing when we have such a foundational issue? Well, it can be, we, we have a hub. We have a hub for where this work can come out of mm -hmm. that is a partnership. It's not relying on any one jurisdiction. So we should lean into that and not just fail. So we can use that um, already sort of structure of expertise and just continue to enhance it instead of pulling out. Because if we pull out, then we're on our own and we're starting from scratch. Here we at least have a point, a place in which we can come to the table with the county who also needs to be supporting addressing this issue, right? We, they need to be helping with the mental and behavioral health and the supportive housing and the, um, the ways in which we're supporting houseless people who have substance abuse issues. So um, it's, it's a point at which we have an opportunity to collaborate. We should build on that see our weaknesses and bring it to that table instead of saying, no, we're going to go a completely different direction. Great. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Um, I 
think that we need to stay in the joint. Um, what's the word? I'm losing the word. Joint Office of Homeless <laughs> yes. Services. Yes, Joint Office of Homeless Services. We are having two of the commissioners are going to be voted on as well this fall. And so I think that change in personnel will also help with the rebuilding of relationships that Jen was talking about. And I think we've kind of just been like fighting heads and fighting over territory is what it feels like with the current city and the current county. And what I would like to see with this new, every single candidate has been talking about how we need more housing and you've probably heard that a million times. And I think that if we have these similar goals, we need to create a vision for where we want to go and then backtrack that with the dates and data and um, yeah, metrics of how we're going to do it and progress reports. I think in the last, when the city council was voting on the last one, um, all of them voted yes. Dan Ryan voted no because he wanted to be a disruptor and I don't think that's what we need right now. We don't need disruptors. We need collaborators and I mean, having a healthy discussion and compromise on things, but not just to be like, no, because I want to disrupt the situation. Like we have enough disruption and we really need to be working on the common goals that we already have. Thank you. I feel like, um, well, I, I believe that um, if it would only be from scratch if we didn't put the right leaders in, you know, and what I mean by that is me being a worthy leader, I come from that environment. I come from both. Um, I'm coming in sacrificing already with the Global Unity Network, where I've been doing worldwide work with this you know, justice. What is it called, the Global Unity, Unity, Unity Network. Network? So we assist senior citizens and um, at-risk youth, um, pairing them with um, companion animals, and um, we mentor youth, get them to drug resources and um, psychology classes and um, like mental homes. We talk them into it, you know. So I feel like this is a big step forward for us because who I am in the community, it reflects Portland because we, we, we still continue to leave out the marginalized. And I'm, me being half Jew, Jewish, I speak from both standpoints. So it's not poor me with me. Mm -hmm. It's really uh, looking for a solution. And, in reality, it's like um, after all the American treasury that um, these black people, because I can't even consider myself that because I'm like African American. So I don't really fall into that, but I fight for them. I fight for LGBTQ. I fight for animals. I fight for everyone that's been doing it before this role. Did I hear you say earlier you're related to Neil? Yes. How? Well, I was adopted by him. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was, so Jim Pettyjohn, that's my dad, and that's who consulted um, Neil Goldsmith. So uh, that's how I am um, by law Jewish. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah. So I'm really biologically my grandmother. Anybody tell you she comes from Italy, an immigrant from Italy, and my family comes from Nigeria. But I'm adopted into the Jewish community. I understand. Thank you. Yeah. All right, I want to ask all three of you, what would be your first resolution you'd want to push on the council first? Yeah, first policy, first resolution. For me, it would start? be, yeah. um, again, me being out in the streets and knowing what the world, I can, I'm somebody who you can stand next to with the, and you don't have to worry about getting robbed or shot at that moment. And that's big, because I'm the only person that could go anywhere in this city it never happens, not to me, you know, so um, public safety, my, my uh, recruiting leader is Bruce Brazard, I'm a Marine, but I'm also a reformed gang, gang member, and not only a gang member, but I'm a shot caught leader mm -hmm. that decided to give my life to God, so I'm the leader of this whole community, Bloods and Crips, I was born um, to a Crip family, the first Crips. Um, and I was adopted to the Jews, which had bloods in their family. So that's how I ended up a uh, blood. So I, I've, I've always been able to negotiate and mediate. And we have to look at, we don't need these people to die. 
you know, even though there's some issues going on, we have to address this. Because this is what is influencing Portland, the hip hop, the gangsters. That's where you get the opioids and the skateboarders. They go do their thing. We're gonna go get our skateboards and our opioids. But we look up to Snoop Dogg over here. Mm -hmm. So I'm bringing public safety. I'm bringing that all the way down with me and my team, which we already got a large selection of military and police officers. Okay. Great, thank you. All right, Jennifer, what do you for policy? Um, I think it would be to stop the sweeps. So I don't think that we should be um, displacing people until we know where they, else they have to go, until we have another place to refer them to. Um, and from a budget perspective, it would be to fully fund chat and Portland Street response, but that wouldn't be sort of a resolution approach. That's gonna be when we have our first crack at um, restructuring the budget. And um, to that, where do you take the money away from? Well, I um, think we that the way that the new council is going to look at the budget more comprehensively is going to be really informative of how we do that. Because right now, the way that we look at it in these silos is making it really difficult. So um, I'm not so. This past spring, the police bureau was investing significant amounts of money in overtime. Mm -hmm. But if we expand. Portland Street response, can we alleviate some of that overtime? Because now we have another team that is responding to emergencies. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at the budget comprehensively, the entire public safety service area, to figure out how we manipulate those numbers. Great, thank you. My, <clears throat> excuse me, my resolution would be to fully fund the Portland Street response and make sure that we can figure out where that money is coming from. Like, again, Jennifer and I agree a bunch of stuff. Um, since everything has been so siloed, I feel like there are points where different um, different bureaus have been doing the same jobs mm -hmm. and we're double spending on a lot of different avenues of trying to be effective. So I think if we really looked at the entire budget and streamlined it, we'd be able to find cost savings in things that are happening multiple in multiple areas across the city. So we can streamline those, get them all in one thing cut those costs and put those savings into um, Portland Street Response and other safety measures. Great. I'm, I'm going to ask you a follow-up on this and yeah. I'll ask all of you the same question. Um, so which, if you could audit one agency or office in the city, and either for financial purposes or maybe just because they're not doing their job, uh, which office or agency or who, um, who would you direct audit? Prosper Portland. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think I would have to say the public safety service area, the whole unit. Portland City Concern. The which, Portland, which one? City Concern. City. Yeah. Central City Concern? Six, six, yeah. And uh, I, I've known quite a bit of people for quite some time uh, who worked for them. And then there, my cousin actually works there. He's a good guy, Troy Ford. But um, I just witnessed a lot of stuff. And it's the reason why we're going down. And I feel like. Um, those funds have to be allocated for because um, I'm not a rat, but you know, like if you ask people certain questions it, it, and they go around it, you know, it, uh, it, it draws, you know, suspicion. Okay. okay. Um, <coughs> so we move to the lightning round? Yeah, I was kind of already there, but yeah, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue. Um, okay. Do you, want, do you want to ask one of them? Or you? No. Okay. Keep going. <laughs> um, okay. So next question of the lightning round. Um, yeah. So as described, we're trying to keep this short. So one or two word answers to these. Um, uh, so there's been a well, task sites, the large, mm -hmm. the tiny home sites that the mm -hmm. mayor's been putting up around Portland. Um, do you think that's working? Do you want to continue that initiative, or do we kill it? Only two words. That's just like cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> I would say no. I have a lot more to say on that. But knowing that there's one that they've been attempting to work on just on North Portland Road by my house, there's no sidewalks, there's no infrastructure, there's no bus line. As soon as that opens, someone is going to get killed by a car. It, 
I'm gonna give you all like cool minutes. Okay, good. I'm like, I can talk more about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's the one on North Portland Road. I drive my kiddos to soccer practice up at Delta Park using that road. It's 45 miles an hour. Yeah. There's no sidewalk on there. It's over a mile to the bus stop. It's right in the middle of industrial area, which they had to like DEQ test to make sure that it's not a terrible site. And then they just black topped it. So it's going to be hot. There's no trees. There's a lot of things. There's no services. There's no bus line. If we're going to have a task site, I feel like it needs to be in a space that has infrastructure and services nearby. Okay. No. What do you think? So similarly, but I would say yes, we need safe rest villages, but we need to do it right. So going back to my sort of previous comment of like, we shouldn't back out of things just because we haven't done it right yet. Safe rest villages bring units online quickly. They're climate controlled. They have a lock on the door. They make people feel safe. They can stay with their animals. They can stay with their loved ones. Can I push back on it quickly? Sure, this, site, this rest site was decided last year and it's still not open and it might open in November. So right, that's so why it's like we're it's, not doing it well. No. It's, but yeah. So what, we what is the what so are we doing wrong? One, uh, we need to find the right locations. They need to have services. So the Arbor Lodge um, Veterans Shelter has tiny homes on it, right? And that has an adjacent building that has private restrooms and laundry facilities. So we need to do it well. <laughs> we need to improve it. It doesn't mean we, that the service isn't necessary. No. Just because our current council has failed to do it effectively. We also, we contract with nonprofits that don't even necessarily uh, aren't centered in Portland. That shouldn't be the case. It should be Portland nonprofits like Do Good Multnomah that are leading these. We should be fast tracking them to get opened quickly, um, not having these barriers. It should not be taking this long, but the units themselves are critical transition housing for a lot of people. Is there a location that you, right now you think we should build one of these things right now? Like Ooh, in that's terms a, of siting, like is there an ideal site for one? Good question. I mean, let's look at uh, lots and vacancies. So the one, the Arbor Lodge one is opening in an old Rite Aid that closed and um, you know, it's a, it's a big lot and a big facility and we have, and if we think about the amount of commercial conversion space, can we purchase and take over some of these large scale places that have lots and properties where we can re, like remodel this approach? Great. Awesome. What do you what do you think about the test sites? Well, um, I feel strongly and believe that uh, if I was in, I would probably use those places for more recreational purposes rather than addressing homelessness like that. I would come at the homeless issue a whole different way. You know, so it doesn't. It wouldn't even so. I no, I don't believe in that at okay. all. Great. Okay, this is actually an answer. More cops, less cops, right amount of cops. Go. Cops from within our community. Yeah, uh, which of the okay, sure. Okay. <laughs> but which of the three? <laughs> um, I would say probably current levels. Current levels, okay. I I don't know. Current levels until I know more. <laughs> okay. Well, I would bring more um, officers, at least a couple hundred, um, because just the fact that you have to ha build healthy relationships with everybody that you deal with. And um, I know from speaking with the chiefs and them that they're looking for an extra couple hundred. To, so they have a plan of their own. I still kind of believe in them. So um, there's a lot I, would, I can suggest, but that's just, I'm gonna leave it real brief. Great. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. And another two, two words, maybe uh, PSEF, should we reallocate funds from that to fund other parts of the city's budget as the city council is currently made? So no, definitely no, not. No. Uh, well, that's why you put somebody in the chair as commissioner, because you bypass these fundraising issues and these grant issues and these money issues, because now person who's in charge has to allocate for this with proper math. So as long as you can show the math and it's all adding up, I think everything be okay. I know it. Yeah, so awesome. I did it. Thank you. Uh, okay, which current city commissioner do you think has been most effective at their job? Um, commissioner Rubio. Same. 
Carmen. We'll go with Mingus. Um, I think that's the end of our lightning round, unless you have anything else to add. I don't believe I do. Okay. We have one fun question for all three of you. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. um, fun for us or fun, fun for you? <laughs> Generally, everyone's had fun. So far, everyone's yeah, had fun. It's good. It's all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. The, the question is what were you best known for in high school? Oh my gosh. I was like a singer and a dancer. A singer and a dancer? Yeah. I was voted most likely to stand out in a crowd <laughs> in my senior yearbook. Nice. Next to the um, male version winner who was just really tall. <laughs> I was a band geek and a choir nerd and what was it, the drum major I was a music, music awesome. geek. Nice. Well, thank you so much for coming back. Yeah. <laughs> thank All you. Right. It was a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. You as well. Thank you. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye. You too.